I'm Rear Admiral Thomas M. Dyke is retired. Welcome aboard for another true story of the silent service. I'm sure you'll be interested in the account of the second war patrol of the USS Tang, a submarine whose whole active service consisted of only five patrols. But during those five, Tang and her skipper, Captain O'Kane, hung up one of the greatest records of damage and destruction to enemy shipping ever credited to a submarine. Oddly enough, this is the patrol during which the Tang didn't sink a single ship. It starts with the Tang refitting at Midway Island early in 1944. Look, I don't care what Commander Hastings says. I'm going to get two more welders on this job if I have to buck this all the way to the Commodore's office. Well, maybe you'll have better luck than I did, Captain. He turned me down cold. Well, I'm going to go up to the Commodore's office right... Here comes Commander Hastings. He's got blood in his eye. What's the idea of asking for two more welders, O'Kane? My men are working on a dozen ships beside yours. The idea is that I promised the Admiral that the Tang is going to refit and go on patrol in 13 days at the outside. You know as well as I do that we send them out of here in a normal turnaround time of 23 to 24 days. And we only manage to do that by working around the clock. Now look, uh, Commander... No, 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 no. Uh, everybody knows what a wonderful job you fellows are doing, Commander. It's just that Captain O'Kane wants... I know what he wants. I was attached to the Navy Yard when we built the Tang. O'Kane wrote us till he got a launch a month ahead of schedule. Can you come up here a minute, Captain? Dick's gonna take her out in 13 days, Commander. Even if she's pasted together with chewing gum. What's the matter with him? Remember, Dick was the exec aboard Wahoo. And then he was detached to take command of Tang before... Wahoo and Mush Morton and all her crew were lost. He figures he's got a score to settle. Yeah. Tell O'Kane I'm giving him the other two welders. At dawn of the 13th day, Tang left Midway under orders to patrol in the vicinity of the island of Palau with the objective of destroying enemy shipping. After one month on patrol, total score of enemy shipping sunk, zero. Captain, the cook made this rice especially the way you like it. I've had enough, Andrew. But, Captain, you haven't had any. Sorry, Andrew. You find us a couple Japanese carriers, and I promise you I'll eat three helpings of everything. Even a freighter would give me an appetite. Captain. Message from Com Sub Pack. All right, let's have it. Right. Set a course for truck, Murray. Flyboys have a big carrier strike coming up there. We're supposed to pick up any of them and have to ditch. But our orders also read, Tang will act independently against enemy as opportunity offers. Let's make ourselves some opportunities. <laughs> The island of Truk was a major Japanese bastion. The Navy sent a tremendous array of power to reduce it. The first stage of the attack was wave upon wave of fighter bombers to reduce Truk's defenses.
was on station off truck waiting. Did you ever see a prettier sight? Not since I last saw my wife. Meanwhile, the battle wagons were catapulting their float planes. The mission was spotting and reconnaissance, not fighting. I had him for a minute. There he is again. Tall Pine, this is Fox Peter 29er calling Tall Pine. Over. That's code for the North Carolina, isn't it? This is Tall Pine. Go ahead. Over. I've spotted three ditch carrier planes a little west of Yulu Island. Well, they're drifting in toward land from Leelam Reef. They'll be under fire of the shore batteries any minute. I'm going in after them. Over. Tall Pine to FP-29. Seas are running too high for your plane to land and get off again with the three-man overload. I'm going in anyway. Maybe I can taxi them out of the range of the shore batteries. Fox Peter 2-9er, this is Lily White. We're coming to your assistance. Give us exact position of ditched flyers. Over. between co-op and truck. Left full rudder, all ahead full. Rig a free running line and life ring to the radar mast. Japanese planes ashore shore batteries may spot us any minute. We may have to tow those rafts clear while submerged. Twenty millimeter gun crews, man your stations. Stand by to take her down fast. When you gotta go, you gotta go. <laughs> Rig out bow planes. Rescue party, stand by. Let's get that guy from the North Carolina. Come right to course 230. All ahead flank. Steve, radio that float plane. We're coming after him. He's got another one, Captain. There's the float plane. He's off alone in the water. Yeah, it looks kind of funny. He's got one, two, three, how many do you make, Murray? I'm not sure, but I count seven guys. Standing room only. One of those flyers is injured, Captain. Something's wrong with his arm. Hills, customer for you. Thanks for fishing us out. Hey, you seem to have done some pretty good fishing in your own hook. I'm afraid we're going to have to sink that plane of yours. 
No use letting her drift ashore for the enemy to play with. Well, it's just fine with me, Captain. If I never see another float plane, it'll be okay. Sink that plane! Communications, Captain. Another raft reported. His position's two miles south of Orlan Island. Right, Steve. Tunnel will be almost dark before we can reach estimated position. Request night fighters to join us and search for raft. Captain? Yeah? I've uh, radioed the names of all ten of the rescued flyers to the task commander aboard the Lexington. Well, I hope we'll have some more names for you in a few minutes, if we can get the latest bunch before it's dark. Oh, well, what's the name of that float plane flyboy? Lieutenant J.G. J.A. Burns. He's a reserve officer. Well, remind me to make a special report on him. How's the injured man? Well, Pills was working on him when I last checked. Now, don't worry. A dislocated shoulder is the simplest thing in the world to fix. It says so right here. Grasp the wrist firmly, placing one's foot in the armpit for leverage. Now, in a rope, take the arm outward to an angle of 40 degrees. Pull sharply until shoulder slips back into place. Oh! What's the matter? It's a long arm. Oh, well, well sure, I, I was just practicing. Hey, you know something? I didn't hurt a bit. All by the book. Now all you need is a sling. I'm giving you special mention in my report, Burns, for repeatedly risking yourself. Well, don't tell him this, Captain, but I was never happier than when you sank that plane of mine. These carrier boys, you get a chance to fight this war. Battle wagons, you can have them. Observation, reconnaissance, scouting. Then when they want to give us a pleasant change, it's scouting, recon, and observation. <laughs> All we ever do is look, and see, and report. Everything we get a crack at the enemy. Well, maybe we can give you a little excitement. How you make it out, Andrew? Oh, just fine, Captain. All set for the second service in the dining car. Sounds as if you used to be aboard the trains. Yes, sir, the New York-Chicago run. Now that we got 16 extra officers aboard, it's going to take me two and a half sittings at each meal to take care of all you gentlemen. That's quite a change from the old dining car days, huh? Well, none of these folks ever sent anything back to the chef. I haven't had one complaint yet. <laughs> of course, we don't get any tips, neither. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? Wake up, Sleeping Beauty. The prince has come to rescue you from the enchanted castle. Some prince. Why don't you turn back into a frog? You know what these submariners call it? When they got a lot of extra hands aboard like this? Hot bunking it. Where'd they put all those chief petty officers that gave us their quarters? You think you got troubles? They're sleeping in the torpedo rooms. See those enemy batteries? All those gun emplacements are on the southwest end of Olan Island. It'll be sunrise in a few minutes. I think we'll run in, lob a few shells into those emplacements with our five-inch gun. The fighter bombers have probably put it out of action already. I don't think yesterday's strike hit that end of the island, sir. That's right. And there'll be a big strike taken off from the carrier right now. In a half hour, they'll be bombing everything on Olan Island. And don't you see how confused the enemy will be? We'll start throwing in our shells at the same time. They won't even know we're around. Maybe not, Captain, but I'd hate to make book on it. I'll quit worrying, Murray. I'll bet you a dollar they don't even fire a shot at us. Have the gun crew stand by. Well, we'll try to show you a close-up of our version of the war. Last time I counted, we had 19 of you guests on board. Well, you're all invited for grandstand seats on deck as soon as we surface.
enjoying the show, gentlemen? I promised you ringside seats. Every little helps. <laughs> Say, Captain, I got an idea. Hmm? I flew an observation over that Japanese battery. And I'm sure they can't train their guns around to cover the south inlet. You see here with the reefs and all, it's, it's too shallow there for them to worry about any attack in force. There's no reason they'd ever have to defend it. How about taking your ship in there to hit them? All right, we'll do that. Oh, that ought to be lots of fun. Especially considering that these charts were probably made by some... Uh, British windjammer captain before the Civil War. That's going to have a good road map. I'll bet you another dollar we get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> I brought you up here to do a job. And we're going to raise this periscope up to full height. That's high above the surface of the water. You're an expert observer. How'd you like to spot our fire for us? Gee, thanks, Captain. All right, this is the periscope. Now, on this side here is the high power, low power. Now, this is your range finder. See this? Yeah. Here's your focus right here. On this side is your elevation and depression. I see. Now, here's your relative bearing. You swing it here and here and see your relative bearing. Uh huh. All right, now, when you use this, you've got to ride it. It's got a lot of weight behind it, so put your shoulder into it. You want to try it? Yeah, sure. How you doing, Murray? I've seen better charts in the National Geographic in my dentist's waiting room. This ought to be just about right. Yeah, sure. I hope we don't have to dive. We've got just about enough water under us to go waiting in. Down. Five double O. Right. One five. Down. Five double O, right one five. Up one double O, right O five. Up one double O, right O five. On target, rapid fire. On target, rapid fire. That is ammo dump. Come on up here and have a look, Burns. Break out the biggest U.S. colors we have and lash them to the deck. I don't want any of our trigger-happy flyboys thinking we're a Japanese sub. Thanks, Murray. Every little helps. I feel a lot better with that out there. Did you ever hear what the Duke of Wellington said when he looked over his own troops? No. I don't know what the enemy will think of you, gentlemen, but you're certainly scared the devil out of me. <laughs> Bridge, radio. Three flyers down on a raft, just north of Bernard Island. Come left to 170. All ahead flank. Bridge, radio. Our air cover will be unable to stand by. They can just make it back to their carriers before dark. Bridge Eye. Ten minutes more and it would have been so black we'd never have found them. Thank you. Shoving off for Pearl, Murray. Pearl! We've still got every torpedo aboard we started out with. I know. And 19... Now that last batch made it 22. 22 more men than we started out with. We're going back heavier than we went out. Fine patrol. We won't dare show our faces around the base. Put our course for Pearl Murray. This 
is sure one fine looking patrol report. On Tank's first patrol, we got five ships. What am I going to tell him this time? 30 days off Palau and not one fish fired. Well, we did pull 22 guys out of the drink. Yeah, and hit one two bit enemy battery. Have you, uh, made out that report in Burns yet, Captain? Yeah, I, I radioed Task Force Commander this morning. Even if we're in the doghouse, maybe it'll help to give him a boost. He sure has it coming. Captain? What is it? Uh, nothing, sir. Beg pardon. One, three, five. Well, it won't be long till we're giving him the bad news. What's the band for? Don't ask me. Maybe they're expecting somebody else. Good to see you again, Dick. That's quite a crowd you've got aboard. Yes, sir. Let's adjourn to the wardrobe. I want to get all the details on your patrol. Yes, sir. And you've set the pattern for the future, for what we're calling lifeguard operations. I tell you, Dick, the flyers would give you their right arm. And their left eye, too, if you asked for it. You pioneered a completely new technique. It worked out even better than we dared hope when you were ordered to truck. In the future, they'll be counting on the subs to rescue every aviator who has to ditch. Lieutenant Burns uh, brought in seven all by himself, sir. I know. Is he still aboard? I want to see him. Yes, sir. Pass the word for Lieutenant Burns to report to the wardroom. I probably don't have to tell you that I'm awarding the combat pin for all aboard. I'm sure you guessed it. Well, uh... Oh, Admiral, this is Lieutenant Burns. I got O'Kane's report on you and passed it on, Burns. And Commander Pack asked me to tell you that your application for fighter training has been approved. Your orders are on the way. Wow! I beg your pardon, sir. Not at all, not at all. I think wow sums it up very well. <laughs> I'll be back in a moment with our special guest. Now I'm very happy to present to you Captain Richard H. O'Kane, who is the skipper of the Tang on the patrol we have just shown you. Good to see you again, Tommy. You certainly brought back some vivid memories. That must have been quite a patrol, Dick. It was. I think your viewers will be especially interested to know that all the scenes you showed of Lieutenant Burns' float plane with seven men he rescued aboard her were real combat footage made at the time. We had a 16-millimeter camera bug aboard who shot them. Dick, this will embarrass you, but I want our viewers to see the decorations you've got on your chest. Not only the Congressional Medal of Honor, but also the second highest honor, the Navy Cross, three times over. Admiral, you said you wouldn't do this. I had a wonderful executive officer, Murray Frazee. I wish he could be here, not to mention the Tang's whole crew. I'm sure we all do. We hope you will be with us again when we bring you another true story of the silent service. Break the dawn, the dark goodbye, through the deep blue underneath the ocean. We'll control the ocean wide, from down, down underneath the sea. Take the force for back the world, in the future yet to be. That the same, as long as the Thank you.